Welcome to our discussion of the uh, arts, community, and the media. Uh, my name is Lily Cornell. Joanne and I are co-chairs of the Upper Valley Arts Alliance. I'll say a word about the Alliance, and then a word about this conference, and then turn it over to Joanne and our panelists. The Arts Alliance has been in existence for about 10 years. Several of you know us well, several of you know about us. <coughs> Those of you who are not uh, in either category, we're a very small and low-key operation. Um, we, our main effort is uh, maintaining a website, which is uh, ubarts.org, which I commend to you. We have some material on the table there about it. We have a very modest budget. Uh, we're uh, counting on uh, support from chiefly from the Barrett Family Foundation of the Upper Valley, uh, the New Hampshire Community Foundation, to whom we're very grateful. And we have a modest income from those who subscribe to our website and get our special services there. Our mission in life is to promote communication within the arts community and between the arts community and the outside world. So it seemed a natural choice to bring together representatives uh, from arts organizations and individual artists with representatives of the media. I, my first thought for this conference was to call it reluctant partners. I thought that sounded pretty <laughs> dim. So I suggested to Joanne, uneasy partners. She said, no, that's too negative. <laughs> so it came to me, creative partners seem to be pretty modest and anodyne, and that's what we're calling it. Uh, our sense of the matter is that there's a partnership that exists here between the arts community and the media. The media uh, depend in part on the arts community for advertising revenue and for news and of course for uh, an audience. And the arts community depends on the media for a place to reach the public to explain what they're doing uh, and uh, to further their own aims. We had an interesting conversation yesterday with a representative who can't be here, Jen McMillan, who publishes the uh, Quichi and uh, Norwich and Lebanon Times. And essentially what we found ourselves discussing was how we can get around this problem of having arts organizations send press releases to the media that don't get published, leading to bad feelings. And what, how we can get the arts community to send press releases to the media that the media really want to read so that they don't have a stack of stuff that they have to set to one side. So with that end, uh, we brought together a very varied group from uh, print, radio, uh, and all over the place. Uh, and uh, we're going to ask them to explain what it is that they do and what they expect from the arts community uh, to help them on their way and uh, what they can do for the arts community. So with that in mind, I'll turn it over to Joanne who will introduce our panelists. Thank you, and I have only one other comment to make and that is politics aside, I think if we get to know one another better, we not only make better choices, but we listen to one another. And I feel that it's really important to have this opportunity to not only hear from the panelists, but also to hear from you. Um, I know we all have our own angst and our own stress, but I think if we find out what's going on at their place that makes their lives um, so difficult because they have to make choices like we have to make choices. So I think this is a good opportunity for us, as I was always saying, this is information sharing. I don't want it to get naggy. Um, if anybody gets naggy, we're going to stop you right away. Um, but I also want to say to the panelists that we have kind of put a timeline of five minutes for them to do a kind of quick overview of what their world is all about. And if they go too far, we may have to get the hook for them too. So um, what I'm going to do now is just read little bios on each one of them. And then I'm going to start at the end with Alex Hansen who's here from the Valley News, and if you all know, tomorrow is the Art Day section, and he has a newspaper to get out, so he's going to um, whip through, not whip through, because I'm going to have him say as much as he wants, but um, 
uh, give us his information, and then uh, at the end, we're going to start with any questions to him right away so that he can scoot out. So, on that, Alex Hansen is the feature, feature editor of the Valley News. He's written about the arts in the Upper Valley since 2005 and has been covering the region since 1998. Thanks, Alex, for being with us. Ty Robertson is with VPR. I have to stop and just say how pleased I was to see two representatives from VPR. I think it's really great that they would take the time with the, the amount of range of work that they do do to have two people here. And you'll hear now why both of them are really good to have with us. So Ty is the coordinator of community engagement at VPR and has been with the station for 17 years. A significant part of part, her role is in VPR is, is administering the media sponsorship program, which highlights arts events happening throughout the VPR listening area. And next to her is Charlotte Albright. And Charlotte moved to Vermont from Maine in 2006, after more than a decade of reporting and producing for Maine Public Broadcasting Network. She has also contributed many stories to VPR. In January 2012, she joined the VPR staff and now covers the Upper Valley and the Northeast Kingdom. So Joe Everts is next to her with the complete hoop. We've all heard from Joe because Joe is part of our big arts community here. She's a professional writer and journalist and the co-founder and editor of the complete hoop, the monthly arts and events periodical in the Upper Valley. The Hoot includes a comprehensive cal calendar of arts and special events, reviews, previews, and feature articles. She is also the director of Twilight Arts, a youth Shakespearean program that does a full production each summer with 7 to 20 year olds. Okay, and next to her is Dave Clark. Dave is in charge of, or he has, he's the founder of Yellow House Media a local website that features listings for music, theater, art, and dance events in the Upper Valley and beyond. Dave is also the founder and president of Clark Communications Group, a full-service advertising agency that specializes in print, broadcast, and digital marketing for a national network of retailers. He's an active singer-songwriter, and Dave can be found playing guitar or bass uh, and singing solo duo with his country style rock band ju joint for Americana's Most Wanted. <laughs> Dave also sings on, uh, help me with that. Vandal Society? Yeah. Acapella? Acapella. Okay, there was a, okay. Acapella, there was, I think, a, sure. anyway. Uh, <laughs> Renaissance music with Wen Song and will be performing the Mozart Mass in C minor with the Handel Society in Spalding Auditorium this May. And next to him is Julie Smith, and Julie's with The Point. She's a senior account executive with The Point and also with another station in Montpelier. And The Point is a triple format adult uh, album alternative, <coughs> and she's been with The Point since 1997. And Michael. Michael is our uh, social media person, and he is the founder of uh, his business called Means of Production, a marketing agency uh, for businesses whose uniqueness come from a sense of place. His company helps firms with website design, social media strategies, data mining, and content marketing processes that allow clients to target the ideal prospect with the right message at the right time. Now more than ever, marketing intersects with art and technology, and means of production builds online solutions using personalized creative content and automated marketing strategies that attract the right clientele and gather behavioral data resulting in increased sales. And last but not least is Laura Jean Whitcomb. Laura Jean is part of, she has a company called Howling, uh, Howling Beagle, Com and a bunch of publications are back there for you all. So please do take some of these things that are on the table for you. Laura Jean is the founder and editor of the Kearsage Magazine and the Art and Gallery Guide. She also publishes Upper Valley Life and Kids Stuff Magazine with her business partner, Laura Osborne. 
Between the titles, the talented team also local, they also local from photographers to the printing company to the ad sales reps producing 15 issues annually. Laura Jean's background includes a degree in journalism, an MBA in marketing innovation management, and several marketing positions in the high tech nonprofit and healthcare industries. So at this point, let's all give a round of applause for the very So again, what I'm going to do is have Alex start, and there will be no break, so once Alan, Alex turns his head to tie, it'll just keep going down, and then we'll open up the conversation to you all. So start with Alex. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not a public speaker, so I'll be brief and practical um, as much as I can. So every week we turn out uh, on Thursday a page on the arts uh, and entertainment. And then we do bi-weekly pages on books and movies, um, and those two pages alternate. And the feature section also covers subjects that are outside the arts, science and health, food and garden, things like that. Um, that <clears throat> doesn't mean um, that we write about the arts only on those days. We sometimes will, if there's an artist who has an interesting uh, life history, we might write about them on a Saturday. Uh, if there's an arts project that relates to science, it might go on the science page. So there are other opportunities for us to write about arts here and there. Um, my suggestions for people who want to catch our attention, because we, we have a lot of material that comes in, and we, you know, we, do, we try to look at everything, you know, however quickly we look at it. And uh, so I, have, I, guess, I guess a couple suggestions. One is um, be early, especially if you have, a, have a, something that is a big event for, for you that uh, you might take some time for us to understand. Don't hesitate to tell us a month in advance. And then be sure to follow up and make sure we got it and absorbed it. Um, and, and don't hesitate to be persistent. It, it, in my view, it's, uh, some people, I think, worry that they nag us. And there are probably some occasions where it feels like nagging. Um, but, but we don't, I, I don't feel badly about that. I'm more than happy to have people uh, call me multiple times if they think they're not getting, if I'm not paying attention to something that they think really deserves attention, I'd rather hear it than have it go by me. Um, it, you know, and, and that brings me to my, I think the most important point, which is uh, tell the story. <coughs> you, you know, if you have something that uh, you think is a story for us, you need to be able to articulate why that's a story. And uh, you know, we get a lot of submissions from people who um, you know, say, hey, we have this interesting thing going on, but, but don't, don't connect with why, the question we have to ask ourselves is why should our readers care? And, and sometimes that's obvious, but a lot of times it's not. And some, or sometimes the point is left out of the communications that come, come to us. And we want to know that. You know, we want to be able to sort of look at whatever sheet of paper someone puts in front of us and make that connection as quickly as we can. So we can say, you know, if one pile is stuff I want to get to and one pile is stuff I might want to get to, you want to be in that pile. And, and that's what, you know, narrowing your communication down or focusing your communication to say, this is why your readers will care is what matters to me and what matters to the writers who we're working with. Um, and I'll, I'll add a caveat, which is that um, producing the newspaper is a more, and particularly the feature pages of the newspaper, is a more intuitive process, I think, that people might understand. It, sometimes a story will come in that is a great story, a perfectly good story, but it doesn't connect with a writer who gets it or who, who, who says, oh my god, I have to do this story. Sometimes that's what it takes is uh, there's an element of dumb luck um, and there's an element of timing. Like, I want to do this story, but I am booked with these four things already and I can't drop one of them. Um, so I, 
this is one of the things that has driven me crazy about being in the news business since I've done it, is that there are perfectly great stories that go by us. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it was a bad story, it just means that you know, there are eight other things that the department is trying to get done in the given amount of time. And, you know, hit us up again. Um, or sometimes a story will come around. Um, you know, we might miss an exhibition by an artist who we want to write about, or a musician we want to write about, but they might be performing six months later, and it might be, might be just as valid. So, so send us that extra email or that extra press release, or however you communicate, or make an extra phone call and say, you know, I know you're interested in this, um, he's, he's gonna be coming back, or this is gonna be coming back, or here's another angle, and, uh, and, and you know, we'll give it the consideration it's due um, as best we can. Um, and one other suggestion, which is, you know, we're also a visual medium, and as, a, I, as someone who writes about visual art, I, I often find myself going back to places who can provide me with visuals. Um, whether it's an, it doesn't necessarily have to be an opportunity to come and photograph an event, although that helps. If it's visual art, have, uh, you know, have images handy so that if a, if a writer comes knocking on your door on a Monday and their deadline is on a Tuesday, you don't end up having to say, well, I can get you images, but it can't be until Wednesday, because Wednesday's too late. Um, so I, I think those are, the, those are the suggestions I would make. Um, and then once we go through, I'm happy to hear people's questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks. That's actually interesting to hear you talk about that, because at PPR, I'm in the marketing development uh, department. So I'm on both sides of uh, helping arts organizations promote their, their work on the air, but also trying to promote VPR. So thank you for those tips about how to uh, get a press release paid some attention. Um, so as I said, I'm, I uh, or was in, introduced as administering the uh, media sponsorship program, and I too am not a public speaker. but. Um, we work with uh, a limited number of organizations on a um, media sponsorship, and that is a non-cash transaction. And we have very limited uh, airtime that we can offer to that program. However, what we do have as an alternative is um, underwriting that's available to, at a nonprofit rate, and. <clears throat> That's uh, administered by the underwriting team, and it, it enables people to schedule spots more, more strategically. Um, it's fairly affordable. There's also the ability to do things on the, on the website, on the homepage of vpr.net, which is great for visual arts because there's a tile that's right up there at the top, and clicking through is, is, uh, is excellent. We get about 40,000 visitors to the website every week, so pretty good traffic as well. Um, but the media sponsorship portion is um, really kind of uh, haphazard. <laughs> uh, people will email me directly with, with a, a show that's going on, and it really boils down to scheduling. And what, what we think is going to be of interest to VPR listeners, and what we, we have available for time. Um, and the juicy thing about the media sponsorship program is that it enables you to put a, a, 30, a 30 second spot on the, on the air where you actually get to describe the event in some detail and, and rather than just saying this is happening and when and where. Um, so my email address for you all is basically troberson at vpr.net. APR is in Vermont Public Radio, and my name is Ty, it's spelled T-Y, and you know, send me emails about what you have going on and we'll see what we can do. Media sponsorship has to be a partnership with uh, a nonprofit, however. That's one caveat. Um, FCC regulations, and, um, and so if you are a for-profit, then the, the uh, underwriting is, is the best way to go. Thank you so much.
talk about our accounts and community calendar? Thank because you. Because you know more about that than I do, and I know that's another big way of getting into it. It's true, and it may, you may have to ask me more questions about uh, our accounts. But our accounts, has anybody heard it, first of all? Okay, great. That means it's, it's working. Um, the Art Hounds segment is part of programming. It's not promotional. Um, I have nothing to do with it, but um, it is a, a segment that, that airs twice a week, and I wish I could remember when, but anyway. Thursday, it's Friday. Thank you. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and it's, it's essentially artists telling us about what other artists are doing. You can't promote your own work. That's that's the uh, that's the rule. But you can al always get people that you know to you know call our towns, tell them what I'm doing, and um, you can just go to the uh, vpr.net and some somewhere on there maybe vpr.net slash art right. yeah. and um, you know submit something that's fabulous that's going on for some some you know, one of your artist friends in the community. Uh, the calendar is, well, the calendar is even more haphazard because um, when VPR split into two services, news and, and classical on a separate service, you might think that that would have doubled our ability to, to, um, to promote the arts, but unfortunately it, it didn't, <laughs> ironically. Um, the news service is, is so tightly scheduled with uh, programming and, and other uh, underwriting announcements that have to be read that uh, the calendar uh, is not a formal program. Basically, you can send a, a press release, it'll go to the programming department, and whoever's on the air at the time, if they can, mention uh, an event, they will, but there, there are no guarantees. Um, one of the things I'd like to get from, from being here today is uh, feedback from all of you about the possibility of, of some sort of a statewide arts calendar that um, we, we, VPR did try to, to um, institute some years ago, and it, it, the technology was not great for uploading information it became a full-time job for one person, and it just we had to abandon it because it just wasn't wieldy. And it's possible that now there are better ways to do it. So um, I'm open to that, so that conversation as well. That would be interesting because um, just as, a, as an overall <coughs> news uh, item here, more and more people are accessing us directly from our website. Um, and when they go to our website, Sadly for me, they don't always click on the listen button. I work really hard to get sound, but uh, by the time they get to the website, it's turned into a newspaper, which is fine. Newspapers are good. But um, uh, so if we did do some sort of arts calendar, it would probably make more sense to do it as an online thing, because as you say, yeah. the broadcast time is so limited. So um, VPR is a little different from the Valley News in that we don't set aside a day for arts. And our programming, as you know, runs through the day in fairly short segments. Um, we don't have, as we did in Maine, a half hour called Maine Things Considered. So here, in order to get on the air, I have to do something that's fairly short almost all the time. It's rare to get more than four minutes. The upside of that, though, is that you are on the air at <coughs> important times of day. Um, as opposed to expe expecting people to do appointment listening for one half hour, right? So that's the trade-off. Um, most arts pieces, it seems to me, require more than the two and a half minutes that I have. I'll just say that. Uh, I'm used to doing four or five minutes arts pieces, and I've had to trim my sales a little bit. So think about that when you pitch. Um, I, again, <coughs> Prefer pitches by email. It's C Albright at BPR.net. Albright spelled like Madeline, no relation, no <laughs> dots. It's C Albright. It looks like Albright. Uh, and uh, I'd love it if the word pitch appeared in the title of the email because the emails that we get, there are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And if I don't see that it's, if I see the word pitch in it, I have a folder and I put it directly in the folder <coughs> I call pitch. 
And then when I get time, I look in that folder. Um, so it really helps me organize my sort of online file cabinet if you were to do that. My beats are the Upper Valley, but also the Northeast Kingdom. And I also have topical beats. Besides art, I do a lot of education, and I do um, a fair amount of health uh, field pieces about health. If I can mix those beats, I'm a really happy camper, right? So um, very often, I will look for an angle to an arts piece that um, sort of leaks into another beat. Here's an example. Um, the Becky Bailey will remember this at the Hop Center. When you did a wonderful production at the Hop, you brought in a troupe that talked about homelessness and hunger. And you remember to tell me that they were all going to have dinner at the Listen Center with people in the Upper Valley who are homeless and who are hungry. To me, that was the story. Um, so I went to that dinner. And from that dinner, I was able to promote the, the uh, performance. Um, even if it's a standard, more standard performance, like the Mozart C minor mass. Um, I love the idea that there was a guy at Harvard who finished the mass. <laughs> and Mozart left it unfinished. Um, he wasn't part of the performance. He won't be there um, at the hop, right? Right. Um, Robert Levin will not be there. But for me, that was a key um, to the whole story. So I went and talked to him at Harvard. And then Becky set up um, other <coughs> stuff for me to do. So for me, I guess the precept I would have is that for me, art has to be somewhat newsy. But I want to do news in an artful way. <laughs> right? So I like to blur those lines as opposed to keeping them too, too clear. And so keep it, at least for me, keep that in mind when you pitch it. Um, and Becky's going to be so embarrassed, but I didn't even know she'd be here today. And I thought, what can I read? What can I read um, um, that would give you an, a sense of what you meant about a storytelling pitch as opposed to a straight um, press release? All right. Apologies, Becky. You're going to turn right here. But um, this is a pitch about a glee club, right? I'm going to be honest. If you put glee club in the subject, I'm not going to jump up and down at that right away, because there are glee clubs all over Vermont. And I have to be clear that we are a statewide um, news outlet, um, not a regional news outlet. So whatever I report on that's going on in Norwich better be interesting to people in Virgins, or it's not going to make it. And if, it's, if there are too many things like it happening across the state, it's a hard sell, right? So how Sorry, do I explain? your comments going to be too much longer? Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. This concert by the Glee Club offers some really special material and great guests on us. The cornerstone is an amazing setting of a suite of poems by Garcia Lorca. Okay, she got me. So if you can find the thing that sets your Glee Club apart, you'll have a better shot at it. And I'll take questions later. Thank you. I'm Joe Everts of the Complete Hoot. It's great to see so many familiar faces here. Um, I guess the, the thing that, one of the things that I find amusing about the arts um, was summed up in a cartoon I saw from the New Yorker on their annual calendar, which I always find a great hoot. Um, and it was a, a woman talking to a man on the street corner and he was dressed like a bum, you know, totally like a bum. And he's answering a question that she's asked him, which is clearly, what are you doing these days? And he said, oh. I'm raising funds for my arts organization. <laughs> so I think if you work at a uh, media organization, you are already inclined towards the arts because you're either writing or you're broadcasting or you're summing up or you're trying to be engaging in some way or another. You're probably involved in supporting various arts organizations of, but with your volunteer time or your funds or whatever it is. So it seems to me that one of the things you should assume is that we are already on a similar wavelength. None of us is making a lot of money from what we do. Um, we're very sympathetic to your tight budget. We're very sympathetic to that. Um, and it's good to start out, I think, on the ground that we are very similar in terms of what our interests are going to be in the world. I remember my husband asking me once after we'd been married for about five years, do you think you will have lived your life for love or for money? And I said, for love. And he said, yes, me too. Well, I think that's what we do, all of us in this room do. So assume that we already understand that you're on a tight budget when you contact us. Always, always um, appreciate the deadline. 
The Hoot is a monthly. We come out on the first Friday of every month. So our deadline is always the last Friday of the prior month. So if you want good coverage, get in by the deadline. And it's extremely smart, and there are only a few of you in this room who do this, it's extremely smart to send a high-res photo to me with your PR release. Send a 300 or larger PR uh, photo with it, because then if I have a chance to do it, or if it captures my attention, I'm going to put it in. Um, I noticed that also, uh, for instance, uh, Grace has started including from the Duckworth quotations from the artist. Great idea. I just put that, uh, there's a filler space, I can put it right in there. It's another way of drawing attention um, to it. It's what's ready at hand is important. I love the way um, both Nuance Gallery, but uh, Marcy was trained at Dartmouth, and Dartmouth do a terrific story, and they also do calendar listing. Because then if I don't have a chance to do the story on it, or I'm not grabbed by one thing or another that happens to be coming up, I can, I can use your blurb for the calendar, which is what you want. Because you've taken the time to highlight with your adjectives what the event is, what's happening with it, and so forth. So it makes great sense to do both. The calendar listing at the end of the story is smart because it gets me reading the, the story, and if I'm going to get caught in the first paragraph, I'll get caught that kind of thing. So um, we've made a change from doing many previews to doing very few previews, more reviews, because we hear from our readers that they really want the reviews. They like reading something that sounds a little erudite, has a little bit of cold wit to it, and uh, isn't, isn't uh, you know, uh, uh, sardonic. They like, they like reading that kind of thing about what's happening in the Upper Valley. I saw a woman on that early morning CBS show on Sunday who was being featured because her attitude towards doing restaurant reviews in some a Midwestern uh, town newspaper was emphasize the positive. That's what the hoop does. We emphasize the positive. Um, you can, if we say nothing about some aspect of it, you can assume we had nothing good to say about that <laughs> aspect. And that may be helpful to you if we say nothing about it. Because those of us who write for the Hoot are very experienced in our fields. Um, we have degrees in whatever it is that we're working on and critiquing. And it can be helpful to you to say, whoa, I thought those costumes were great. Um, and yet they don't say a word. Well, OK, it may be that they weren't memorable, but it also may be that they weren't good. And that brings me to my next comment, which is call us. Ask us. See if you can find a time. Email us. Ask us what else is going on in your area, because we know we see all the stuff come in. We know, uh, I was talking to one nonprofit recently who said, I can't believe it. We haven't seen anybody for three months, four months in the winter. And I said, nobody has seen anybody for three or four months in the winter. This was just too brutal a winter. Well, then I forwarded her something I had seen in a transaction ad about um, or pauper or whatever it is that's in Woodstock was offering, uh, saying it was their anniversary and they were offering 35% off if you went within the next couple of weeks. And I actually cut it out and sent it to her. Because I said, boy, if these guys who are so popular in Woodstock are offering deals, you can be sure that everybody was in this winter. So that will help you kind of get a sway to it. We can let you know what other organizations might be open to collaborating with you. So keep in touch with us. I've noticed that the emails over the time we've done it, our big thing is the calendar, which is so comprehensive. We have the most comprehensive calendar for the month. And advertising for us is a month's worth because people hang on to the paper and they look for what's happening at the wherever, canoe club, but they also look for your ads. So it's a good place to have your stuff out there. Our advertising rates are ridiculously low. We do uh, specials for nonprofits um, occasionally where you'll get three months of a one eighth page for $150. We do those now and then. We do class ads for three months for $150. We, uh, you know, so we're very nonprofit friendly. Um, and I think what you'll find if you do stay in touch with us by email is we appreciate a more personal uh, communication. We really do. We really do. Because years ago when I first started, I really tried to give, you know, say, boy, thanks a lot. You know, thanks for this or this was great or whatever. And now I find that you guys are also writing back and saying a few personal things. That's very helpful because most of us are tied to our desks and our computers. So getting something on email is very, very nice. It's improving the quality of our lives, which is very screen-centered. Now, the Hoot has 
we choose who our advertisers are. We're very careful about that. We don't recommend organizations or events that we think are not very good. Um, we, don't rec we don't recommend events that we think uh, fray at the sense of community in the Upper Valley. We're, we're somewhat, uh, we're able to do that. And that's what we do, that's how we started, that's what we still do. But we do hope and expect that you will do some advertising with us over the course of a year's time. Um, so if you want good coverage, that is a key. We don't like to tell you that, but it's a key. If you advertise with us, we will give you better coverage, only because you're helping us stay in business. Not because we're taking home chests of gold, because we aren't, but just because it's helpful to us. It makes it more likely that we can say to somebody, yes, I love that place, and you know, they're great. They advertise with us, which is fabulous. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, the last thing I was going to say is we do the OWL Awards once a year, which is nominations for excellence in the field. That is only a dinner. It is done by nomination. If you have events you want to have nominated, respond to the email when it goes out. Nominate in August, and the votes come out at the beginning of September, and you want to be sure you've done it so that you're there for the dinner itself. It's purely a community event for us. It's a small fundraiser, but really what it is is a way of supporting the arts in the Upper Valley, and that's become more and more popular. Thanks. Thank you. Great. I'm Dave Clark. I'm with Yellow House Media, which is a, a a website that um, I created as a musician uh, about eight years ago. Uh, I was, I, I'm also an advertising person, so I, I kind of put the two together and said, well, how can I help support musicians in the, in the local area? And um, rather than have the website be just about my music, I decided to make it about everybody's music that I, that I knew of. And um, it's, it's a labor of love. It's a, it's a free service for music, theater, art, and dance throughout the Upper Valley and beyond, um, but primarily for the Upper Valley. Um, you can send listings to me by email at dave at yellowhousemedia.com. My deadlines typically are Sunday night because I also, if you're, if you're in the calendar for Yellow House Media, you're also uh, going to be, um, I write an article for the Vermont Standard that comes out every Thursday, so you would also show up in that in that article. Um, go, if, if you, really the, the best way to get the information from Yellow House um, uh, for other publications is to just go to the website and sign in. Um, Dave, you know, there's a name and email place to sign in for receiving the newsletter. We now have about 2,700 people on our list. Um, but every week I'll send out a newsletter. So. There's all the listings, uh, and if you're a pub, if you're a media, feel free to use them. I'm, my job to the arts is to just help elevate the whole awareness of all the things going on throughout the Upper Valley. I'm not perfect, by the way. I, I'm, I'm a one guy, one man show, and so I, I screw up regularly. And, uh, um, but I do love what I do, and uh, I think that's the key for me is as long as I'm doing it because I choose to do it, then I, I can give it four or five hours a week, you know, which is what I do. Um, other things. Um, we do a First Friday event in the White River Junction, which has been phenomenal. We, I, I organize music uh, for events. Because I'm <clears throat> involved with so many musicians, if you're doing an event and you're looking for musicians, I, I really strive to put the right musicians in at the right time frame in front of the right people. And then you have a chance of creating what I call magic. And uh, so if you're having an event, music can really make the difference. Um, and that's it. We're also using our e-blast. Uh, we're making it available. We have about, I think I said 2,700 people uh, for a uh, on a per pay basis. If you want to do an exclusive email, we are working with uh, Buddy Kirshner right now. I don't know if Kirshner concerts, but we help him promote concerts through the Yellow House e-blast. So if you have a special event and you like it out in front of 2,700 music lovers in the Upper Valley, we can uh, put something together for you there as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm with Point Radio. I'm a sales representative here in the Upper Valley, WRJT at 103.1 and 107.7. The Point is made up of three radio stations. We simulcast out of Montpelier. It's the same music and same live on-air 
but we have the ability to break out commercials. So you can buy one station or you can buy two or three, depending on what your needs are. Um, our audience is very well educated. They're active audience um, people. Um, we have a high crossover with public radio. People who want to listen to music listen to the point. People who want the news listen to public radio. Um, my job is to meet with as many people in the community as I can and see if there are some um, opportunities to become partners. Uh, we are very supportive of organizations in the Upper Valley. We work with Living Around the House, City Center Ballet, Hopkins Center. Um, I just was talking with people at the Montchara Museum and we're going to be giving away family four packs for T-Rex named Sue. Um, it's just one way of like getting the word out. Um, so that's basically what I do. I mean, I'm happy to meet with as many people as I can to see, you know, community <coughs> partners. So, I'm going to take a slightly different tack here and ask um, a question. How many of you folks in the audience blog? Just raise your hands. Do you blog regularly? How many blog more, say, once a week? More than once a week? Anyone? One person. Two people. Two people. Um, I'm of the belief that each and every one of you, if you represent an organization or an arts organization, you have to be a media company as well. And what I mean by that is you should be blogging regularly, at least 10 times per month. And it sounds like a heck of a lot of work, but the truth is there's a lot of photojournalists, I'm sorry, there's a lot of journalists and photojournalists for that matter, that are willing to do the work for you if you can line it up ahead of time, and they'll do it for a very reasonable amount of money for nonprofits and arts organizations. Now, you're probably not going to be reporting breaking news, but you have an opportunity here to blog regularly and get your organization out in front of people who are searching online using the keywords that are important for your organization. You also have an opportunity when you write a blog to promote that bit of information about your organization repeatedly throughout the entire year. So when you write a blog, you don't just write a blog. You write a blog and you promote it on your social media channels. And you promote that same blog over and over again, a dozen times, once a month, throughout the entire year. What this does is it gets you in front of an audience that's interested in what you do. And it drives them back to the website to actually read your blog. Once they're there, you have opportunities. You can create call to actions. You can see if you can nurture them as part of that um, giving pyramid to you know, become long-term donors through getting them to give up an email. Right? Once they give up that email, you can nurture them going forward. I, um, I'm a big believer in kind of really monitoring what takes place on a website. So it's not just about becoming the media company and creating your blogs and embedding your videos and putting up portfolios of images. But I also think that once you get them back to the website, you need to offer them something that is of value. Give them something that would allow them to give up their email to you. And once you do that, continue to reach out to them. And not in the way that we most normally see, which is you're sending a need newsletter and saying, hey, we have these performances, we have these events taking place. Give them more. Provide them something really of interest that is more than just you. I think it was Alex that said, look at your audience. Concentrate on your audience. Now, one of the things that I really like to do is to take that to almost NSA levels. <laughs> By literally watching, once they give up an email, watching what they do on my website and creating content on my website so that I can start to list segment people based on their interest. If there's a variety of things that you do, and each one of them has a page, you will be able to tell who is looking at what pages, and then send emails out directly to those people who are interested in one part of your organization. Nurture them with, was it Joe, you said personalized? Right, yeah, personal. Yeah, yeah. 
nurture them with personal information that they're really interested in so that they will then come back to your website and you will remain top of mind. So, blogging is sort of where it starts for me. Lots more pages on your website. Every time you blog, you're going to go up in search engine results page rank. Google's going to favor you. You hit 120 pages on your website, you actually see a jump. Well, let me just say that with the most recent algorithm change, you will see a jump. You hit 500, you're going to see a tremendous jump. Your traffic will probably double. So it's, a, it's really important nowadays to do that. Now, everybody here at this table, you have to be in front of them as well. Because another hugely important part of this is something called link backs. You want every organization here to link back to your website in some way. So if you're running press releases, if you're getting information out there, you, you need to ask if you can embed a link so that it comes back to your, to, to, you know, to your uh, website as well. Um, radio, obviously, not so much, but they're no, online no, no. far. We Definitely. link to everything. There you go. Okay. Everything. <laughs> we are very big web now. Big yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say take it one step further, right? It's really great to concentrate on the local organizations, but I'm going to recommend another source. Uh, PR Newswire or PR Web, there are organizations out there that will spread your press releases. Is it important to get picked up by um, somebody outside of the region? Maybe, maybe not. What's more important is that if you do get picked up, you get those link backs to your website. And that helps your search engine result ranks. Now, all of this sounds like a ton of work. It really does. And it, it can be overwhelming at times. But once again, we're not talking about breaking news here. And we're talking about promoting the culture of the organization and maybe some of the, the events and the things that are taking place. You know in advance when that's going to happen. So literally, I do this for my clients. I do it for myself. Seek out journalists, we actually have them write 52 blogs all at once. They turn them over in a month, we plop them on the website to go out once a week, and then we supplement those blogs with our own writing at the same time. So that's my stuff. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I get to wrap up. Um, I'll go with the shocking news. I don't want your press release. <laughs> right now, I am working on fall articles Summer's at press, one summer's at press, the other one's in design, the third one's going next week. Um, fall is lined up, the articles are coming in, and if you have a holiday event or activity, I'll take it now. So I'm not really your press release person. By the time you get there, it's too late. Um, but you can think of me when you sit down and you plan your marketing strategy for the year. You're going to need everybody here. You're going to decide what money goes into the advertising bin, what money goes into the press release bin, how much time you're going to spend on social media, and map that out. If you have a big event or several big events, make sure you time it so everyone here can help you promote it. Um, it's, I try to give you a couple different opportunities. Upper Valley Life does Hanover, Woodstock, Lebanon, and Queechy. Kearsarge Magazine does the Lake Sunnabee, New London, Grantham area. We all go down to Concord as well. Um, maybe you have a pitch for Kid Stuff Magazine, an art project, a camp. Um, you're working with kids. Maybe the Art and Gallery Guide is a good place for a profile. Try to think of how you can adapt your message to different mediums. Um, you're all doing very, very interesting and different things. And if you can sit down and think about that angle, not the press release that everybody gets because I don't want it, think about that angle and really sell it to me, you got it. I'll do whatever you guys need to get, get you what you want. But you need <coughs> everybody here to give you really the best bang for your buck. That's all I got. Oh, that's <laughs> great news, eh? A lot of secrets. Um, from this table. I am going to open it now to questions from you guys. Um, when you ask a question and we acknowledge that you're going to be asking that question, would you give your name and your affiliation so we know where you're coming from when you ask the question? So who wants to go first? 
Yay. Um, I'll ask you a question. Um, you oh, are? I'm Becky Bailey from the Hop, and um, I'll direct it at Alex, but anybody else can answer too. Is there anything <clears throat> in email communication that annoys you other than the content? Any technical thing that you just say, oh, no, not that again, that we should avoid? Uh, Long-windedness. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I need to know in the first two sentences what it's about, really. I mean, in an ideal world, um, you know, the, the recycling bins are littered with the evidence of press releases that don't get to the point. I mean, that's, that, that's really... Would be a little more specific and just say, is there any technical thing like would you rather not have to click through or, you know, I mean, no, it's that, technical. that doesn't make much difference whether it's, I mean, whether it's material like pasted into the body of an email versus like a, a, a link to mm -hmm. something or, or something that's attached to the email. No, I don't think that makes a difference. I mean, we, I think we try to read everything. Uh, there are some. I think there are some events that are sort of resistant to simplification, and those ones merit like maybe a follow-up phone call to tell us why it's really important. Um, but but beyond that, that's I don't think I have anything else to offer. I, I do, which is your press releases when they have a lot of information about first started doing his CDs uh, and this year, and then this year he published, you know, in 1922, and now he's published four more CDs. Really, I'm not going to include the CD information. I mean, I understand that the artist wants it included, the musician wants it included, but in the article, I'm not going to waste my time promoting his CDs. He's going to have to sell it on the basis of his concert. And that is a nuisance. I'll give up a paragraph because I don't want to sort through and get all that stuff out. And speaking of promoting, this is going to be sad news for you, but even though you are likely to need to put all your funders, and I'm noticing with every decade, everybody has 20 more funders than they used to need because every funder is spending less. So now there are 20 funders that you feel politically obliged to thank. And Ty's going to hate me for this because we want to be thanked when we're funders. But, um, <laughs> but we can't. Um, if we link to your website and that's on your website, that's how people will get that. But don't clutter up your your um, emails telling me how you got the money for this because we're probably not going to be able if I did that there goes my two and a half minutes mm -hmm. um, the other thing I've never I rarely see this mistake uh, unless you're totally a rookie but um, it's not going to really sell it to me because a, lo a lot of other people have done this you know when you say well the Wall Street Journal did this and the New York Times did this and the Valley News just did this yesterday and I'm thinking, okay, then it's done. Um, so maybe those are all true things, but you might not want to trouble those. Let me find that out, and then I'll decide. Another question for Alex? Yes, hi, Dave. Hi, Joanne. Dave Salone, uh, Long River Studios in Lyme, New Hampshire. Um, the panel is great. Um, and for those three or four of you that I've interacted with, um, you've been very helpful. Uh, in the past, I feel like I'm batting maybe about 250 uh, here with media. You, it's nice to see this audience. This question is directed uh, pretty specifically at VPR. I just wonder, uh, because we're in line, uh, we're within your listening area, uh, but we're out of, outside of the state of Vermont, uh, we have lots of Vermont artists represented in our gallery and our studios. Is that something you'd consider for a story? Absolutely. Okay. I'm the Upper Valley reporter. I don't observe the river. <laughs> I, I find that there are bridges on the river that I can travel on, so I would love to hear from you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and in terms of media sponsorship, we work, we do work with the Hop. We work with, uh, um, you know, sometimes London Opera House. So we we are interested in the listening area, which extends into Montreal and New York and Massachusetts. So we're yeah. open to all possibilities. Yes. Hi, my name is Tom Wolke, and. Um, with. Well, I do lots of different things uh, with White, White River Film Festival, and, and um, um, I put on children's shows in the summer. Um, I, I'm curious, this, this is actually kind of old, and it goes mostly to, to you guys at VPR. I used to run the Claremont Opera House, and um, I was always torn because actually in Claremont, the best uh, radio signal you get was actually VPRs, not New Hampshire Public Radios. And uh, I noticed they're not here, I'm not sure 
they were invited or whatever. But um, the, I, I'm curious if um, how you how you broach Vermont Public Radio covering something in Lebanon or something even as far away as I don't know, you know, uh, um, New London or something like that. How, do, you, do you guys like literally draw your border and say? If it's not happening in Vermont, we don't really cover it unless you pay us to buy that well, area? Well, um, I just, the Upper Valley did not have a dedicated, by that I mean term of art, right? We're all dedicated, but uh, <laughs> they did not dedicate a reporter to the Upper Valley until um, our studios were renovated and completed. So I've been on that beat for a year. Before that, we didn't have an Upper Valley reporter here. Now, you absolutely do. Um, and that is my priority, although I live in the Northeast Kingdom, I have to say the Northeast Kingdom comes second most of the time. Um, uh, so uh, the way they explained my job to me was that they looked at the map and they said, okay, you're one town east of the river and two towns west of the river. That's how much they think I can cover. Now remember, that's going to the Canadian border, you know, so that's a lot of territory for me. I like to do field pieces. I prefer not to do interviews. My job is to be out there. So part of it is travel time. Um, I mean, if I'm in the Northeast Kingdom, I'm not going to be able to travel that day to something on one side of the river, <laughs> one town on east of the river, if I'm that far north. So some of it has to do with my travel time. Uh, that's why you have to get things to me somewhat in advance. Um, the, but I'm not the only uh, option at VPR. As you know, um, Neil Charnoff does a lot of stuff by phone uh, as two ways, as, as Q and A's. Uh, from Colchester. So if I can't do it, um, I could still be a good gatekeeper for you. I will pass it on to Neil, and at least you'll get maybe a QA, and a uh, even though I can't get to you. Um, same thing with Mitch Wortley occasionally. Um, Peter Biello does a lot of books, so um, I'm not your only game in town for VPR, but I, I would be happy to pass things around to my colleagues. Any other questions? <coughs> yeah, yeah, that, uh, my affiliation is the Upper Valley Music Center. Um, this is a question for Alex. It's prompted by something that I just heard. In the Valley News, there are several people who uh, do pieces on the arts, um, but there's no art editor, as there is a sports editor, for example, who's kind of in control of the whole thing. So the question that often comes up with us is, uh, who do you go to? Well, there's, uh, you'd go to me. You go to the features editor, uh -huh. um, and but then there are usually a couple of dedicated art writers as well. They in the features department we have a you know a group of three writers, and they are uh, responsible for filling pages on all the other subjects that I mentioned, food and books and uh, movies, and then general features, and then we have a couple of people who are going to write regularly about art and entertainment, um, and those. Uh, those people, I think, for the moment, are going to be David Carvo and <coughs> Nicholas Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and their, their job are, is going to be producing stories on uh, performing in visual arts for the Thursday pages. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also a contact for that page because I'll be um, you know, talking to them about what stories to cover and then uh, editing their work and putting it in paper. Uh, my other question, um, and I don't know, maybe you, you might not be in a position to answer it, but um, I found often that there are that are locals. There are local stories that don't get covered, but rather uninteresting pieces from other newspapers or syndicates that get stuck in. And I wonder if there's any policy about that. How, how do you decide between? A local story and, and a, a filler piece from another medium. Time. Time. Yeah, time and and uh, just the reporters we have available. Mm -hmm. You know, for for the time being, we, we're moving people around inside the newsroom right now, and at the moment I have two writers, and and when I have three writers, we'll be able to cover more. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm I'm editing, but I'm also trying to still write just to try to keep the sections filled. So, you know, we have. That's the problem, is that I tend to feel like the art coverage could fill more space than we're able to give it. I mean, it's just the nature of the piece. There's a lot going on, and I feel like there are always stories that we could get in, and that's why we try to list as much as we can, 
just to let people know what's happening. Or even if we can't do a full story to do a picture and a, a long caption to let people know what's happening, and that can be a window into an event. Um, but but we have six sections to fill a week on subjects from health and science to general features, and art is just a part of that for us. Um, and it, it, it's by its nature, um, you know, it makes the real estate more precious, and we have to sort of boil down what we can cover on any given Thursday. We have someone here. You? Okay. I'm Mary Ann Barthel. I'm the new arts coordinator at DHMC. And I know Elizabeth Gordon was uh, my predecessor, was one of the people who started this organization. And I'm trying to fill her very big shoes. And one of my questions for all of you is um, you, you want a hook, you want a, a story. Do you want us to present the whole thing, or do you want us just to give you enough information so that you send a writer out? And it, the answer may be different for each outlet. But you know, I can certainly write a creative story about, you know, for instance, we have an artist right now who one of the reasons she went into this a medium of um, uh, more uh, electronic art, and she's got amazing pieces that are huge, is because she had uh, a hand injury that prevented her from doing uh, her watercolors. And then she was treated at DHMC. And uh, you know, came there. Yes, exactly. So I mean. Do you want me to write that, or do you want me to just do the two sentences and then you come out and get more of the story? Which is easier or faster? Or well, if, if I could tackle that first, so we we wrote a a piece about Gloria and her work maybe six months ago, right. and we're not going to revisit it right. in such a short period of time, and because and partly because I think some of the work will be similar to the work or even the same work that she showed at the previous venue that we were writing about. Right, right. So but I mean that's just an example that's of the an story. Example, but right. Um, but that's that's a nature that's an example of the sort of hit or miss nature of a particular show. I mean, a, a show might be a big show for a venue, but if we've been there, like if we've covered that ground recently, we have to we have to pick our spots. Right. No, and but, that's fine. But what but do you your, need to? But your your point is, yeah. I think, you know, we we need to know, uh, you know, what makes it interesting, and the and the, you know, the however many W's you can give us, the who, who, what, why, all that business. And then we decide whether we want to send a writer out. Okay. Um, and so, but that's that's our requirement. I'm sure that's very different, or different from everybody here. No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, as you may know, I've done a number of stories at DHMC. And one thing that sets you and Dartmouth apart from other groups is that you have an army of public relations people. Right? <laughs> and that's great. That's good. Um, but remember, you're going to have lots of people from DHMC trying to get attention. Um, you have two health public relations people. I'm just doing a story now um, about treatment of acid reflux. And um, so, so DH, DHMC has great stuff going on. One thing that they're, so the answer is no, you don't have to write the whole thing for us. But um, we will, cons we will look at what's been written because a lot of your public relations people apparently do have the time to write the whole story. It's sitting there on the website and I certainly check it. You know, I check to see, uh, you know, what Mike Barwell has written. It's because you've got your own internal organization publications and I, I would certainly not go on the air without checking to see what you all have written. The chances are though that my piece would be less promotional. So where where Mike would have put that patient, the fact that that patient got that great treatment there at the top, um, I got to be careful that I am not your publicist. Um, right. And so, I'm more concerned about so, the art. <laughs> so when you do pitch to somebody, you know, like the Valley News or BPR, um, finding a way to make it uh, important to people who might not even be within the treatment area of DHMC. Is, is hugely important for us, or, or else we probably will say, well, you've already done that on your website. You don't really need us anyway. I, I think a story is a great idea. A creative story is a great idea, but don't include quotations. Because usually the quotations, you know, you're sort of putting and fabricating them from a PR viewpoint. And if we were interested in doing a feature, we'd be in touch with you. But I think a good story, we're all writers. So, yes. We I have one more comment. Sorry. Right yeah. Why aren't you the story? She's been there for so long. You're new. What do you have planned? What's coming up? How can artists get a hold of you? Excellent. 
See? I'd love to chat. <laughs> Just turn it on your head. I, I, you know, I think it's, you're the story. Maybe, and then we talk about in that article what's coming up, but I think you might be the news. Yes. Uh, Michael Bean from the White River Indie Festival, and I just want to express our appreciation for all the support we got from a lot of you this year. Uh, we do buy ads, but we also got a lot of great coverage. And we are appreciative because I think you guys help keep us in business, really. Without arts reporters, we'd be nowhere. Uh, I think we got the traditional media coverage. I, I, I am interested in the social media. I think it's an area we taken stabs at, but we haven't had much success. And it sounds like you actually will do that for organizations, is that right? You, That's correct. You hire out the service uh, to do some dollar figures worth of social media, is that how it works? Correct, right. Generally starting with, um, you know, sort of a persona development, who is it that we're going after, what the target market is, and it could be everything from creating um, Eventbrite events, which a lot of people use now to determine what's taking place in their area. Uh, to pr just tweeting on your behalf. So. Great. Yeah. Yes. I, I wanted to second what Michael said about all of the work that you do to get the and word you out. Are? Michael Caduto, sorry. I'm here from, with two hats, really. I'm a performing artist with the two states art councils, and I'm also the director of the Justin Morrill Homestead in Stratford, which is a state historic site. Um, I'm the friends of, of the Justin Morrill Homestead. And I guess I had. In addition to all the great ideas and information that you've shared, which are really helpful, um, I had kind of an open-ended question, which is, um, you really have your, your, uh, the sense of the pulse of what people are interested in and what they respond to. And as someone who's planning events, I'm always trying to think of not just what's interesting to our organization, but what people really are interested in, what they'd like to come to. So. Uh, I guess for Alex, because I know you have to leave soon, and then perhaps, and then everybody. But what are some of the things that you think are the um, events, subjects, things that people you think what you get a response when you do an article, or I know a lot with uh, the, with the Valley News, everybody's got an email that people can respond to. What are the things that jump out to people that you really are looking for and really excited about? I wish I knew. Because <laughs> it, it, it always is a surprise to me what people uh, will email me about or even occasionally send a letter about. Um, it, uh, it's not intuitive. Um, it's not, you know, <clears throat> last year I wrote a story about uh, some milestone or some, something about um, uh, the, one of the monuments at the uh, at the Cornish Historic Site, the St. Gaudens Site, and you know, you, I spent a reasonable amount of time on the story. We gave a big display, and I got you know maybe one message saying, "Hey, thanks for letting me, you know, thanks for doing that story." And so we get very little feedback from the public, and I, I, I'm always a little surprised by that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll occasionally get, or I'll occasionally get an email from someone. Um, you always knew you'd written a good story. Nardi Campion wrote you a note. You know, <laughs> now that she's gone, you, you know, it's hard to it's it's hard to know what that uh, barometer is. Um, and so we, I, I wish there were some sort of secret sauce there that that I could pour on a story and and have people let us know it was great. But I I just don't. Um, and I've been, I've been writing for the Valley News for a long time. I always know when someone's pissed off. <laughs> and, 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 that's, and it's always, that's great. Like, great, you're responding. You know, I'm sorry it has to be this way. But it, okay, it, we but, should do events that make people really angry. <laughs> it, would, it would shake things up. You know, but I, I mean, that, that might be helpful. No, I, I really, I really wish I knew. That's so, thanks. And maybe other folks have more. You know, I've gotten better response from from particular stories, I, but I I really feel like it's um you know like it's uh, it, yeah like the feedback just isn't there. So there is reasonably priced software that will allow you to determine you know whatever the article is, whatever you're putting out there, who is coming back to to view that, the numbers of visits that are looking specifically for, for that page how they got there, so whether we're, they were coming through Google or social media or 
a direct, you know, and um, how long they spent, wh whether they read it or whether they, you know, bounced off of it. So they're, you know, so whether it's Valley News or your own organization, there, there's opportunities to actually kind of track all of that information and determine, you know what, this information is what's getting the greatest numbers of visits, people are spending the longest amount of time, we should probably concentrate on writing more about these kinds of ideas, and it will just increase traffic back to your website. So we we do that. I mean, we mm -hmm. use Google Analytics, mm -hmm. um, and as a I've been a reporter up until Monday, and, I, and now I'm features editor, and I'll be paying more attention to that, I think. <laughs> but I, but I have to say, I think more often what drives our coverage is just what sounds like a good idea right. from from the public. Sure. Uh, from mm -hmm. and from the organizations that we're dealing with, you know, if we if we live, you know, we, the people we write about are people we see in the grocery stores and around town. It's a small enough area so that it, you know we we feel like we have a sense of who the people are and what's going to be of interest to our readers, and and that's what sort of drives coverage. But I'll be interested. That, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I'll be interested to, to see whether we get any information that gives us a sense of who is reading the stories and wh how they're reading them, how they're sort of absorbing the material then. I, I flip it around though for the people in the audience, I would suggest that you know, through writing your own blogs and creating your own content, you can then determine what's really resonating with your, with your audiences and use that as, as kind of the basis by which you would pitch stories to the folks here, right? Yeah. So you know, we know that this one was a dud. This blog, you know, we had three readers you know, and, and, and uh, maybe 50 visits, but less, you know, most of them spent less than 10 seconds actually reading the article. Probably don't want to pitch that. <laughs> yeah. I will say, though, that as far as um, social media traffic goes, it can, it can skew things. Um, the story that I did that got the most social media traffic was about fat bikes, not even within my realm of... Uh, but they happened to be doing a great fat bike, you know, those are the, were the big fat tires in the winter. And it was in the winter and people needed something to do in the winter. You know what this winter was like. It went viral, it went crazy. It went farther than any stories I've done about, you know, I don't know, child abuse, uh, anything that, it just, people were desperate for something to do in the winter. And um, the other story that went really far was about donkeys playing basketball. <laughs> so I'm thinking, am I going to do don't more donkeys? Should I do more fat bikes? I don't know. <laughs> um, but the thing is that there are cults. There are social media groups, subgroups. Yeah. And the fat bike cult is huge. Yeah. So that's going to show up as a lot of numbers. That does not necessarily drive what we're, what we're doing. One thing I would say about arts, though, is that right now, I think people have reached a limit of bad news. And I'm sorry that I have to keep doing it, but um, last week, Nina Keck did a wonderful series about foster children. At the same time, we did one story about abused animals, and the abused animals got a lot more attention. How do I say that? So, um, I think just being in the arts is a good thing right now. Anything that you can do that makes people sort of take a break uh, from some of the news that is troubling them, you're already on the right side of that right now. Don't, don't worry about how to make it any better. So I want to bring up a general question, and that is calendar of events. Um, I know when the Arts Alliance got started, one of our big ideas was to be sure that we had a calendar, which of course dudded until we got a better website. And there are a bunch of us who put calendars together. What does it do for you guys? Anybody look at them or add, add your information to them? Um, it is very hard to keep track of all the information. And the one thing that we were trying desperately to do was to not have you overlap. Because that's the one thing in the fall and the spring that events, major events happen and you want to be sure that those people aren't going to the Montshire and going to the Hop, and you know your thing gets stuck somewhere. So we need a little more conversation, if you don't mind, um, to the panelists and to the or to us um, as the Arts Alliance, with how you feel about calendars and whether, as Charlotte brought up or Ty, I forget who, a statewide would work. Um, and then again, would it be Vermont? 
where would the water go, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So any, anybody want to start with some kind of conversation about that? Yes. Um, actually, Dave and I just talked about that this week about, you know, we're both uh, having openings at different times and not to compete because sometimes we even have the same artists featured in, in our shows. And so having a place to, to look for that in, is great and, and to be honest with you, starting out and just getting uh, inheriting a list of here's where you send things, I hadn't even thought about the flip side until I started talking to David about it and having a good place to double check and make sure there aren't things, but I do know that uh, thanks to Alex, you know, getting the calendar out, we we have there's a, a checker at the the co-op in Hanover who came to our art opening, and I you know talked to her a bit that night, and then I saw her again this week, and I was like, oh, you know, did you have a nice time? And I said, by the way, how did you hear about it? She said, oh, we saw it in the calendar in the Valley News. So, you know, it was really really helpful from an advertising perspective. People do read the calendar, especially the Valley News calendar. I know it was very well read, but I think it would be very helpful to double check, especially for events that are very similar. Uh, you know, a, a silent auction gala is going to draw a different audience than an art opening sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I'm not as concerned about that versus something that Dave and I are doing the same Don't time. Don't be silly. You're looking for donors. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm doing that all the time. Hello. <laughs> there are red and butter. Um, thanks, Alex, very much for being Thank with you. us. Really, uh, sorry, I can't stay, but this yeah. is a crazy day. Yeah, yeah. totally understand. <laughs> Thank you. Can we continue a little bit with the conversation? And I know I don't want to keep you totally um, here too late, uh, but calendars, do they work? Do they don't work? Hi, hi what name um, where you're filming? Kira Bacon from the Vermont Arts Council. Um, we are dealing, um, because we're a statewide organization, with this whole calendar issue right now. Um, Currently, we have a joint calendar with the uh, Vermont Department of Tourism, um, and they are trying to figure out a better way to do calendaring. We're getting a new website. We're trying to figure out a better way to do calendaring. Um, and we have recently had a focus group with um, some of our constituents and said, you know, how can we help market to borrow a phrase from my colleague, Lars Torres, who's also here, how can we amplify your message? And the bottom um, request was calendar. They all just were like, I think they went through the whole statewide calendar thing that happened 10 years ago, and they're going, uh-uh, let's not go there again. Which was kind of interesting, but I do think there is a real frustration from people that you know, you have to go to 10 different places to, uh, to put your calendar listings. I do a bi-weekly e-newsletter, um, and I try to put in as many things as I can that are coming up, but where do I go? I go to the uh, Vermont Department of Tourism calendar and find events, and then sometimes I hear from someone who says, but you didn't do my event. And I said, well, were you in that calendar? And they were like, well, no, because they're spending their time doing all of the newspaper listings. And after a while, you get you know, overlook. So I think this is a really <coughs> big topic. I think there are a lot of new technologies. I know there have been several technologies that have been floating around, none of which have seemed to <coughs> really work. But I think it's a conversation that needs to be continued. Thank you. And Suzanne? You're so with, I think... Wait a second. You are? Suzanne Jones. I'm Crop Studies at the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen. In some ways, I think we're talking about two different calendars. Because what you're planning is four months down the road. Like, we were, we, we're, we're looking at an event in, in November. So I want to, you know, I go online and I say, well, what else is happening in November? And there's nothing on the calendar. So I go, a oh, great day. I'm going to choose this day. I'm not going to put that event on the calendar until August, by which time you have picked out your same thing. So I think it, and, and you know, we don't necessarily want the public to know about that we're looking at this date, we're sort of still contemplating it. So I think it's two different things. And um, we do, through Michael, <coughs> um, the Justin Morrill Homestead and ourselves, do a collaborative workshop. And if I Googled it and it came up on the Vermont State, whatever, uh, tourism, it's one from three years ago. Oh, it's, wow. it's, not the, it's not a current up-to-date, because those things, the, the, the history does not go mm -hmm. away. 
and, and so that, I think, is another point when you're talking about calendars and stuff. You know, what, what happened last year needs to disappear. Julie, you are? Yeah, oh, I'm Irene Green from Northern Stage. And I moved here in August from Minnesota, so I'm, I'm new to the area. And so this is um, then a question for me is, where do I go to see what's happening in the arts? You know, and there's lots of different places, but I haven't found that comprehensive point yet that maybe doesn't exist, or maybe I just haven't stumbled across it. But one thing that I've done in, in the past that I wonder if it could work here is um, using Google Calendar and actually having like a master Google Calendar that somebody hosts, and then each organization can actually directly import their calendar to that. Um, at least as an internal working, it may be way too much to just have for the public to view, but it could be separated by type of event, so theater, music, and dance, or region, so we're in White River Junction, and then other towns or other things across the state, so that it might be a way to see everything, and then I could actually be in control of um, manipulating that, so no one else then has to import my calendar to their master, um, but then I also don't have to try to update you know, 20 different calendars that other people are hosting. So that would be a huge project to undertake, and I'm not sure if it would work, but it's something that I've seen other people do in the past. Yes, um, I'm Jamie Feinberg with the Arts Alliance of Northern New Hampshire. Um, and I just wanted to say, it, in, I don't know, I'm not from these organizations, but I mean, New Hampshire, like NHPR is, you know, their calendar is connected to NH365, which is a statewide mm -hmm. website that gets distributed to some newspapers and, and websites, which I think is trying to do the same thing that everyone is talking about, which is you can go to that, you know, one NH365 and your information gets distributed to other places. And it's been built over the last few years, so I think more places are starting to pick it up. But um, I don't know how effective it actually is, but it's, I mean, I, I feel good knowing that at least in that one circumstance, it's getting carried by five different places. Um, and the an internal Google Calendar is a good idea. I was also thinking you could even do it email potentially, you know, but that's probably a more manageable way to do it, to reach out to people before you plan your upcoming season, because I, I also have a theater company, and that's always frustrating when you try to try to make sure you're not conflicting, and then at the last minute some theater announces, oh, by the way, we're doing this in free and it's the same weekend that you've just booked. And we exhausted this situation. I'd really like to hear from the panelists now, because they're the ones that have the calendars and are trying to do all the tech uh, input. So, Joe, you want to end the Yeah, yeah. The, I, the calendar, <coughs> probably 80% of my time is on the calendar. Um, and I don't think there, a lot of places have tried, we're going to have a central location, everybody send it in, that's super. But people don't correct it if they change their date or their time or their location, they don't correct it. I'm afraid that I don't think that there's any substitute for direct communication and hard work. Because when I get your PR, if it says something interesting, I'm going to pay attention to it. If I have to go to NH365 and try to track down what time the event is, you know, what a, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm really not. So I think if you're going to do a great job on the calendar, that's a real specialty. It takes a lot of time to make sure that that's accurate and so forth. Oh, and one other thing is please include the cost of your tickets. People have stopped doing that in their PR because they're sort of hoping that that's okay and we'll list the event anyway and somebody will go to your website. It's a nightmare for us. We need to know what, how much it costs. But I, I don't think there's a substitute for a fine calendar. Okay. Well, I, I, I think Irene's right. Um, a shared Google Calendar is, is, a, is a very good tool to use. Um, we have been, we experimented with that with Pentangle um, and it works great. There were a few things that were slipping through the cracks, and they said, how can we fix this? And what we're using is an XML feed from their calendar. It does take some coordination, and maybe the Arts Alliance is, is the, the organization to put that together and, and manage it. But once the, once the channels are established, then you can have XML feeds that happen regularly, and you don't have to, as long as you update your calendar, then it gets updated automatically, and, and it's just, I think it's the future. Okay, but I do think that there are two kinds of calendars that Suzanne brought up. How, how can we possibly, um, I mean, can it be uh, secured for the arts organizations 
uh, Charlotte shaking her head. I think because I think that's true. If you have um, a security code and you can get into that calendar, at least you yeah. know what the events are among the other arts organizations. You could do it that way, or you could just let. Uh, you could also have another one that would be publicly available. But we, I would. I don't know all the details, but yeah. it's definitely the right path to go is a shared Google calendar. I have a question. Is there any uh, accepted knowledge that uh, pe people go to either the web, a website, or their newspaper for calendar information? I mean, what's what's what are what's the trend? What are people using? Well, why don't they say, all right, all those who look at newspapers first for calendars, raise your hand. Well, I think. Okay. That Sir, I, that might be, again, two different things. I yeah, think you're talking about two different audiences. Um, I have visitors coming into town in July. I'm going to go to the website and I'm going to look for something in July. But what am I going to do this weekend? I'm going to look at the newspaper. So it's, again, it's two different, I think you're... Long term and short term. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right, Julie. I think some people go to print and some people go to the net. Yeah. Um, and I, so I don't think it's an irrelevant question. I, I think what the Upper Valley Arts Alliance could do rather than a daily calendar is, is have exactly a Google Drive thing that people could put in for major fundraisers and so forth. And then if all of us who are participating were willing to do it, you're going to have a hard time just getting a few events in and making sure they're accurate. But if they're big fundraisers or they're galas or you know something special like the pianos or whatever it is, you don't want there to be other, other places. But if, each, if we all got that, um, or had access to it, I, I think that's a super idea. Depends on your demographic, too. Who are you trying to attract to the calendar? Mm -hmm. If they're mm -hmm. under 50, I promise you they're looking at their phone. Mm -hmm. right. They're looking at their phone? Correct. Mm -hmm. Not the web. <clears throat> right. So, I mean, 66% of Google right. searches right now are on mobile devices. 66%. So it's got to work on a mobile device, and frankly, mm -hmm. Most of the people that I work with, the demographic that I'm working with, they don't know what a newspaper is. Mm -hmm. Hell, they don't know what television is. They know what Twitter is, though. Don't forget mm -hmm. Twitter. They do know what Twitter is. We had a comment over here. I, I, was, I wanted to throw out a perspective for, of making calendars and conflicts and trying to avoid them. I think it's very important for galleries, like you were mentioning, to be in touch with each other. But I, I'm going to speak as, a, as, as someone who is has had a, a career as a commercial pr promoter. And so very much like I had, a, I did exactly what Buddy Kirshner uh, does around here, only I used to do it down in, in uh, Terrytown, New York. And um, when I get an opportunity to present, I'll just use a name, I get an opportunity to present to John Hyatt in concert, and that's the day they're offering me. The only thing I want to check is, if I'm, is check that the Lebanon Opera House doesn't have someone like that for the hop doesn't have someone like that but if they if, if the Lebanon Opera House has you know a big deal country <coughs> artist or a big deal uh, classical artist or something like that I'm still going to go ahead and put on John Hyatt because it's a different market I, I can't you can't necessarily run a calendar based solely on not conflicting because there's only 365 days in the year there's only 52 Saturdays uh, so you have to you have to sort of say, well, sorry, I'm going to do the concert that night. Uh, I'm sorry that you have someone that's lesser known than John Hyatt going on the same night at Tupelo or something like that. You, you have to you have to sort of be a practical po point of view. So I think that the Google Calendar idea that this woman is was presented um, is a great idea for planning certain things to not conflict. The film festival doesn't want it. We, we're very aware of when the film stuff is going on at the Hop, at Dartmouth College, um, but we have to put it down when it's going to work for our 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 board members and stuff, and when we can get certain films and come in and whatnot. So it, there's only a certain level of practicality in in having a, a community-based oriented uh, calendar. I just want to throw that out. At Maybe UVAA could do a special interest then on the Google Drive. In other words, you could have something that has to do with musical concerts. So you could tap, tap in and hopefully people will put them up there. And then encourage you know, Heather and Becky to make sure that they get theirs up there so you can look at. I don't think you could go only for pop or country. 
but if there were one that went around for music concerts, one that went around for gallery openings, one that went around for theater scheduling, I, I think that people would consult that of the, from the organizations, wouldn't you? If you knew that there was somebody in your field, you know, performances, say, that would include both dance and other kinds of... Well, one thing it might allow is, is a more cooperative thing. We discovered at the last minute, for example, with the film festival, like literally the last minute, that I think it was Northern Stage was yeah. having a, a big gala thing going on the same week. Saturday weekend. night. Yeah, that was and, and, and so we were like, yeah. man, there's going to be a lot of cars downtown. Uh, um, yeah. And so, you know, what, what, had we known that in advance, that it might have been, yeah. they might have said, well, we can't move our gala, well, we can't move our film festival, let's see what we can do cooperatively yeah. in marketing. Together, you know? Let's take one more question, and then the real reason that I, or Louie and I try and hold these things is so that you guys can get to know one another. So I, that's why we want to leave some time for some networking, and then you can also ask some questions privately to our panelists. Is there any other pressing issue that we might want to bring up right now? Otherwise, could you ask people to put out their cards if they brought them? Because we may not get to meet everybody here, and it is a help. I have a list for you. Oh, excellent. <laughs> for, great, great. So of everybody who came, too. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not really sure history. everybody who came, because there's some missing bodies and chairs here. So yeah. um, I'm not sure. But at least those that said yes, I do have a list for you. Great. So if you didn't, then you need to tell Joanne. You didn't <laughs> RSVP. Yeah, if you didn't yeah. RSVP, then your yeah. name and, and email are not on my list. So it's going to be shared with us as well. Yes, okay. if you email me, and then I can, because I can be PDF it to you, no problem. And thank you, by the way, for including Oh, well, you guys are the ones who give us this idea. And because we really only do one a year, maybe two if we can stand up long enough, we, um, we really do think it's important that the arts tell us um, major things that you'd like to talk about. And this bubbled up with two or three different people. so. Um, we even talked to Jen yesterday about maybe even focusing on um, techno technology and publishing and how that might be changing in the future, but that was just one idea. So if indeed you have some major topic that you'd like to talk about, um, give it to Louie and me and we'll try and work in next year's um, conference, summit, whatever we want to call it. because. I think it's really important to get you guys together. So I want to thank you very much for your time. I want to thank the panelists for all of their time. It's a wonderful group of people, and we couldn't have had a better cross-section of conversations. So thank you all for being here.